Ten seconds. Oh, we got pressure now. You can only get to sit in traffic in the rain. Dude. Welcome to this week's meeting of the Rockland Board of Selectmen. Coming to you live on WRPS from the H. Bernard Monahan Memorial Room at Rockland Town Hall. On the agenda this week, we've got a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee, establishment of the <coughs> Elementary School Building Committee, and fund transfers. Now here's the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Ed Kimball. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Would you all please rise and join us for a Pledge of Allegiance led by a Veterans Agent, Tony Materna. Allegiance flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, which it stands, a nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> the audience participants and general public should be aware that any and all portions of this open meeting may be recorded by audio and video resources. All of some of this meeting may be rebroadcast periodically by WRPS or other outlets. <clears throat> Persons wanting a DVD copy of this meeting should contact WRPS or the Board of Selectmen's office. A small fee will be charged. And I just want to make a note that Mr. O'Loughlin's running a few minutes behind, but he'll be joining us shortly. And with that, we'll move on to our first item, which is open forum. Tony Materna and an update on the Memorial Day Parade. Thank you very much, sir. Well, it's bittersweet again. It's kind of a last Memorial Day for me after 14 years. It's been interesting, it's been a challenge, but uh, Things went very well under the circumstances. Flagging of the Veterans Cemeteries on Saturday, May 27th went very well, extremely well. We had over 100 scouts, volunteers, adults, everybody came out and it was just fantastic. We got the cemeteries, we laid over 2,000 flags within about two hours and 10 minutes. I think that was a record for me. Considering when I first started, it took us eight hours and we only had about 20 people. This time we had uh, overwhelming number of people and I thank everybody in the community who stepped up to the plate and helped make the job easier and uh, effective. <clears throat> and then we had a little memorial at Union Square on Sunday morning at uh, 11 o'clock with the, the VFW Honor Guard firing a salute in, in the taps. And we also had one at St. Patrick's Cemetery Monday at uh, 8 o'clock prior to our parade. Uh, memorial Day Parade went very well. well there was one mess up we had the uh, the sound system did not work very well unfortunately but we managed to go from Mount Pleasant down to the Rockland Library and we ended up down to the Veterans Warm Veterans Memorial Stadium Stadium as well, to our new memorial and uh, it was a little difficult for our, uh, Mr. Horsch who was 92 he served World War II Korea and Vietnam to have him speak without a uh, an amplifier but we did make it and we're hoping that his speech will be printed in the local newspaper. Many people come up and they couldn't hear it, and they asked that hopefully we can get it printed so that they can actually see what he was speaking about. And I, I think that we, we met at 7 o'clock uh, Monday morning to determine whether we should. I mean, they can predicted rain, and that's all we thought of was rain, rain, rain. We didn't need that for the last parade, at least for me anyway. But it did, uh, the rains held up, and we, at that point, called everybody who was an instrumental in seeing that the parade went accordingly, and it went and no, every, without incident. So I do thank the, uh, the people of Rockland for their great support. It's fantastic. So I uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Next up, we have uh, item number two, minutes, open session minutes of May 16th, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous for the four who are here. Okay, under unfinished business, item number three, we have some grants. Mr. Chalker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we've gotten a few grants, which, uh, of course, we're very proud of, and I know we've been talking about for a while doing a state of the town, but sometimes it's uh, a little difficult to keep up with everything that's happening. So if you'll bear with me, I want to talk about a few of our grants uh, of late that we have received. Um, we applied for, with MAPC, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, uh, a grant to prepare Rockland's open space and recreational plan. And what it calls for is uh, the data, the engagement, the vision, and then um, 
finally we, we get a final result of where we're at and where we want to go. There was one done in the town many years ago, an open space, I think, uh, was the primary driver behind it, the open space committee at that point in about 2001. Um, and since that time, of course, we've been working towards with the housing production plan of late, the 40R committee, a few of the things we've been doing in town. We're working towards developing a new master plan, and this would be just one component of that master plan when it was all put together as a blueprint for the town of Rockland moving forward. Uh, included in your books was uh, a very tightly spaced uh, short rendition of what will happen, but I would like to ask the um, board to form a committee, and we'll be looking for applications uh, and or volunteers from the committees. According to uh, MAPC, if you look down in the final paragraph, uh, they're going to be looking to establish a schedule and a plan and outreach to all other relevant uh, commissions and boards such as Open Space, uh, the Americans with Disability, our ADA committee, uh, the Council on Aging, Conservation, uh, certainly Recreation. So I'd like to ask the board to approve, uh, and not to appoint tonight, but the establishment <coughs> of a committee to work with MAPC that would consist of one member of the Board of Selectmen, one member of Open Space, one member of the ADA committee, one member from the Council on Aging committee, one member from Conservation, uh, the youth director, obviously with open space and recreation, we're looking at uh, all of the programs here in town like Hots of Park, uh, and certainly a member of the recreation committee. Uh, we'd just be establishing the committee and then soliciting volunteers from each one of those committees if the board was so inclined. Any, any discussion? Uh, the only a question I have, um, you know, I don't want to put them on uh, the, well, like on the spot, but uh, like a lot of our, uh, like youth, our fields are actually, uh, like on the school department property. I don't have any idea if, uh, like we should reach out to, all uh, the school department, like the Jefferson Field, um, uh, the field behind Memorial Park. I uh, like that. Uh, is that? A school department property as well, and I, and it, uh, if we're talking about this in a larger sense, um, I just uh, like if we could um, at least reach out like and ask, uh, like uh, for uh, like if anyone from the school committee or one of their uh, designees are interested, just like if we're going to look at this in a holistic way, um, uh, that would be my recommendation of motion. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? So let's see unanimous vote for the four that are here again. So we'll add the school committee member to that. Yeah. Fine. I imagine they'll be all working and pulling in the same direction. There'll be it's plenty the same, of citizen participation. Yeah, everyone's doing it for the same idea for right, the kids right. and for other people. So. Uh, oh, I agree. I just I have everyone in the same loop, you know? Yeah. Circle. Circle. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, on the same grant um, report, we're looking at, uh, and I'm trying to give you an update, uh, actually about 13 projects, I think was our last count. If you remember at town meeting, we appropriated funds in order for us to um, try and contribute to uh, the participation in municipal grant for ADA compliance. Uh, once again, Wayne Dara and uh, Communities Opportunity Group did a great study for the town that was completed in 2007. However, uh, finances being what they were over time here in the town, uh, none of the recommendations were ever implemented. It was uh, certainly a blueprint for where we should go as a town in order to try and, to try and comply with the ADA uh, requirements. However, Rockland had never been in a position to do it. Uh, as a result of our financial situation uh, this year and at the last town meeting and appropriation, we uh, wrote a grant request into the state Massachusetts Office on Disability and offered uh, $40,000 from the town for a grant in the vicinity of $96,000 in total. We were awarded uh, $94,000. We were awarded a grant for $54,246 from 
um, the state along with our 40,000 matching. Uh, we may end up a little higher than that, but we do have the funds in the account to accommodate it. But at the same time, I think it's uh, a tribute to the town that we're in a position to apply this fiscal year. Part of this problem with the, the state was that uh, they are looking at making some awards in fiscal year 2017 and in fiscal year 2018. We're one of the few communities, in fact, my understanding is we were a leader in this. We were the first community to actually receive a grant. They were actually trying to put together how do they uh, actually award the money to different communities. Uh, some communities, I think, because of the lateness of the notice received from the state, uh, didn't have money in their FY17. However, this town put it through in the special town meeting portion of our town meeting on May 1st. Uh, additionally, we'll put funds aside that can be used in uh, a grant application for fiscal year 2018. Uh, just to let you know, here at Town Hall, we are going to remove 36 non-compliant interior room signs that are either too high, they don't have uh, braille, uh, and we're replacing those with uh, signage throughout the first and second floors that all match. Uh, we've been working with the uh, building department. Tom Rubel's been outstanding in trying to make sure that we also meet building code. John Lucas and uh, Marcy Birmingham have been absolutely phenomenal, but also under the gun to try and get all of these projects done by June 30th. We received the grant on May 30th, but anticip in anticipation of that, uh, John and Marcy had solicited grants, uh, uh, solicited bids. Anything under $10,000 uh, were, it's called best business practice. We followed all the procurement laws. Anything over $10,000, uh, we got solicited three bids by phone uh, or email. Anything over $10,000, uh, we advertised in May in anticipation of receiving mm -hmm. uh, the funding, and we opened bids on June 1st and awarded almost immediately. In the elevator, we're lowering the call buttons. We're providing um, the Braille jam markings and hall lanterns. We're installing glass entrances at the four primary entrances to town hall so that all the town hall doors will have the automatic buttons. I'm sure you've seen them. Handicapped people can get in. Right now we are not in compliance. And there are two doors on the first floor. If you come in through the back, um, the second door into the first inside in, in the rooms, the second door also has to be uh, made electronically uh, accessible. We're replacing uh, all the door hardware. Uh, replacing dogs, knob levers. Uh, in the restrooms, we're installing grab bars, new hooks, visual alarms. We're installing automatic uh, toilets and urinals. Uh, we're installing um, wing walls at the drinking fountains. We are repaving the rear entrance, which you probably saw if you tried to enter this building tonight. Uh, it's blocked off from the rear because uh, the concrete had been chewed up, and that got done yesterday, and uh, the concrete is still chewed. Uh, curing. At the library, we're going to be replacing non-compliant uh, restroom signage. Uh, we're relocating the men's urinal and meeting ADA standards at the library. And also their elevator, uh, we're providing some uh, an accessible door compartment, etc. So uh, I think it's certainly due to the Herculean efforts of uh, Marcy and uh, Tom Rubel and certainly John Lucas in putting this all together. And all of those projects are going to be completed by June 30th. We're also applying for uh, the second round. Now, the state has said that there'll be up to $250,000 uh, worth of grants available to individual communities. However, in talking with them, it's highly unlikely that any community would get that amount. We're going to go in and prioritize our next list, uh, those things that obviously we couldn't do by June 30th. We're going to try and hit our match that would be attractive to the state to select Rockland. Um, so I just think it's good news. It shows you and the, uh, the viewers that uh, we're working and we're striving towards ADA compliance. If we get everything done, uh, we may be one of the few communities that is actually completely ADA compliant in the Commonwealth. Just point of information for the board, let you know what we're doing here on a day-to-day -day basis. But those are uh, very timely and lengthy uh, projects. So.
Uh, additionally, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just oh. ask a question on that? Sure. Um, are all of those projects that you've listed here uh, priority one under your ADA transition plan? I do not know if they're priority one, but I know that they were in keeping with our ADA transition plan that was completed for us in 2007. We were following that as a guideline. Now, whether they're all priority one, I'm not sure. The projects we were looking for in this round were those projects that we could bid out and complete because we have to invoice by June 30th. All right. It might be helpful to, I mean, uh, who's your ADA coordinator? Is that you? We have an ADA committee. I'm the coordinator on paper. We meet with the committee periodically. We have not had a lot of work until this came, but we've been using uh, with the building department the ADA, and we were lucky that we already had the ADA report. Well, a lot of towns that are applying, my understanding, is they are asking for uh, monies in order to complete a plan. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's pro that's probably true. I, I just uh, I attended an ADA training uh, transition plan training session this year, um, actually. And my my only concern is that we want to make sure that we're funding our priority ones when we can, because otherwise we could be exposing ourselves to liability if we're skipping to twos, threes, and fours, and then potentially get a suit on a one that we didn't do first. Um, so I. I that's my only concern. So I guess I should probably take a look at the, I'd like to take a look at the ADA transition plan. I'm sure all this is in the public building, so it probably is all priority one, but it would be nice to, to take we a look at the plan. We actually think that we can possibly complete with the next round all of our ADA requirements. Including all the, well. Everything that is in the transition plan. In the plan. I'd like to take, a, look peek, take a look at it, if that's okay. Yeah, it yeah. was completed. Uh, Great. As I said, we were lucky that we already have it. What we were yeah, looking for definitely. in this round, however, were those projects that could be done. Now, there's some engineering that needs to be done at the library. We knew we could not complete the engineering and put together a bid proposal and complete that in 30 days. Um, so that's going to be our round two. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Next up on the grants, we have the Council of Asian Band. Does Peg want to speak on it? Or? I I think Peg would probably like to speak on it somewhat. In your package, Mr. Chairman, um, is the ADA. Peg, are you here? I am. Uh, we're thrilled. And Peg has called me time and time again asking when we're going to get our new van. And I've kept telling her that uh, it's in the works. We've been promised it. It did take a little longer than we anticipated. And I think we've held the current COA van together with bailing wire and duct tape. But um, I'm happy to announce Mr. Ryan was with me when they informed us we're supposed to receive a brand new 10-person um, van? 10-person yes. van uh, worth about $62,000 for free as a result of our participation uh, with BAT and some of the grants that we've worked on and the ridership that we have. And Bat Bus let us know about this grant opportunity with uh, working with Peg and again Marcy last year. We applied for um, and we were granted. It's supposed to be here for the selectmen to maybe get a ride on maybe in the beginning of July. Here you go. Um, but uh, it's only, and it's costing us in total maybe about $3,000 because we have to personalize it to Rockland. We're putting Rockland colors on it, and we're doing the lettering. Uh, we found we had a town hall vote on what Rockland blue was. Uh, we had to go around to a number of the parents in the town hall and uh, bulldog parents and ask them, is this our right color blue or is that our right color blue? And we finally settled on a color, and um, Peg is looking very forward to it, I think. Sure. Good thing we're not painting the town hall. <laughs> Thank you. We are very excited about having this new van. Um, I know my drivers are. We go out every day and it's like, oh, we're going to get back on the road again. So um, we've broken down while we've had seniors in the van. We've had to go out and pick them up. Um, we have 121,000 miles on the one that we have now. So we are in desperate need to get this new van. And I want to thank Alan for all his hard work on getting this here, his effort working with BAT to make sure that we are able to get this grant. And it's been, it's just gonna be huge for us. It's gonna be a safe ride for us seniors now. And that's that's the, the bottom line, is they're gonna be safe in the van. So um, uh, for the chairman of the board of the um, 
Council on Aging, for John Rogers, the board members, and myself. I want to really thank you for your hard work on getting this for us. It's Larry huge. and I go over and get a free sandwich about <coughs> two months. Yeah, and I'd like to just say a few words. Um, <coughs> going over all the paperwork and all the things that they gave me to look at and read and do your homework, I had to ask them, are you guys really a government entity? Because they've got it running perfect. I, I just look at the whole thing that they have, and they're very efficient. They're on top of everything. They've anticipated. You know, I asked them some questions, and they had answers for everything that they did. And, and uh, it's so good that they receive us well. When we come into the room, they, they smile and say, you know, they all say hello to us and want to make sure that we're there and, and well received. And, um, you know, I've been to a lot of government things, and this is one of the good organizations that really is on top of their game, and, and we thank them. And if you see them again, Peggy, thank them again. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. She's one of the best directors <laughs> we've ever had. She's a great woman. Do I get a raise now? <laughs> <laughs> she is the best. That's not the raise for Andy. And I have to echo I Andy's, um, I if I could, I want to echo Andy's thoughts. You know. Peg is a pleasure to work with and uh, a strong advocate for the seniors here in town. And uh, I know that the program at the new senior center has gone up. My numbers may be off slightly, but we used to have about 8,000 or 9,000 visits per year for her census count. Uh, every time Mr. Ryan would go into the building or something, that's one. And then the next day is two, and the next day is three. And we're running up around 28, 29,000. And part of the problem, quite honestly, down there right now is, is uh, parking as well. We'll talk about parking a little later on. Uh, and we are looking at the auxiliary lot in the back and working with recreation. We hope to uh, provide a little more parking for the program down there. But uh, the program has taken off. I think the van uh, is going to be a huge help, certainly to uh, our senior programs. And, um, and, and again, $62,000 van we're getting for the $3,000 paint job. So, no, it's a, I think it's a great program. And going back to BAT, um, BAT was because we were using our MBTA money that we got BAT involved way back when. So, as opposed to paying the state for our MBTA fees, mm -hmm. at least we're getting some service back for some of the residents in town. And again, it's a great program. It's um, and the senior center has been great. We're probably going to even, other than parking, we might even have to look at an addition in the future. <laughs> you know, so I mean, yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing because as long as you don't touch the pickleball court. <laughs> you know, initially we didn't have that kind of uh, those kinds of numbers where it was located previously. Right. And I think the fact that you know the townspeople support a new senior center, and the fact that you know we have other uh, we have room there to run other programs, I think is great for the seniors. And um, someday we might be seniors, so. Be good to use it ourselves. Uh, I'm not speaking for you, Mr. Ryan. I know. Thank you. Although I do get my <laughs> AR key card, you know. Yeah. They send that out what, when you're what, 40 now? There you go, yeah. 35. But that's no, a great job for everybody you know. involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's much needed. And I think that last fan came from um, Serrano way back when. Oh. So, yeah, so it's been a long time. So, okay, next up we have item number four. Announcement of public review period for the aggregation program, Mr. Shaka. Uh, once again, we have to have a public review period uh, aggregation program, which we've talked about a couple of times, but I'll briefly uh, remind those viewers who are tuning in for the first time. We are looking to consolidate everyone's electric bill in town, uh, all residents, businesses, et cetera, into one group purchase, as is permitted uh, by law, I think it was, uh, what does it say, General Law 164. People may opt out. I've had one call from one person who wanted to maybe opt out, but after talking with him about the program, I'm not quite sure he's going to. He also asked for the opportunity to look at the documents. So this is our public hearing period that we're required by the Department of Public Utilities to have. We have made uh, the documents available here at Town Hall and also at the library. So if anybody wants to go look at the actual program, it's about 60 or 70 pages long. Um, and we have to have a public hearing on at the June 20th meeting. So we're in our 
uh, we're required to do at least two weeks. We made the public documents available and put it up online, announced it on our website, uh, announced it in press releases on May 31st, so we're well, out, well beyond the two weeks. And uh, oral comments are permitted to this board uh, at the June 20th meeting. So uh, we're letting people know that the aggregation is coming. I can tell you it's been one of the uh, programs I get asked about the most uh, just by strangers on the street asking when their electric bill is going to go down. Uh, in theory, everyone's on average going to save somewhere over $100 plus or minus to $150, I've heard. So uh, we shall see on average how that works, but certainly some of the businesses as well. Uh, I know we ask the residents and taxpayers for money enough, often enough, this is an opportunity for us to return some funds to their pocketbooks. So anyone who wants to opt out will be given a 30-day period to opt out. And after it starts, they can opt out any time they want. So it's even beyond that original 30-day period. Is, I went, it's, this form says it's available on the website. I actually was on the website the other day and tried to find it. Is it not available on the website? The document is available at the library. The announcement is on the website. Right. Um, is it possible to get a PDF up on the website? We can check into that. That would be helpful. Yeah. I am, uh, Any other comments from the board? OK, moving right along. Item number five, joint meeting for the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee for an appointment to the School Committee vacancy. Mr. Chairman, uh, you're already in session. The School Committee would have to call their meeting of their committee to order. Um, you have two candidates. Um, I think they were both planning to be in attendance. You may call them up if you wish. Their letters are in your book. Um, and at some point, at the conclusion of that, uh, it requires a roll call vote. So, uh, is Mr. Mr. Biggins? Right here. That being said, uh, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to open it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That is a vote. Okay. So, in our books, the first person we have is Emily Harrison. Is Emily here? Would she like to come up? Good evening. My name is Emily Harrison. I've been a Rockland resident for the last 24 years. I'm very interested in joining the school committee today. I would like to join the school committee and be appointed um, because I've been a resident. My family has been a resident for so long. We take great pride in our community and it would be a great opportunity for me to get started in public service. Any questions from the board? I just want to say, Emily, I would, oh, we talked at the outset of this, and, um, um, you know, and I'm excited about you being here. That's, I mean, having the school committee, I mean, a school committee, even though I'm here, is still remains all oh, near and dear to my heart, and uh, having been elected young, um, uh, with the perspective of a really, oh, going back just a few years after I graduated, I, um, like I really enjoyed oh, that perspective and other uh, perspective of, of of being someone who just uh, graduated the schools and have gone through the system. Um, um, in terms of um, oh, you know, the challenges or the uh, priorities of the of the uh, school department in our, our town and now as they pertain to the schools, so that you know. Um, like, are there any that really like interest you, or uh, just really um, like attracted you to run for the school committee, or anything along those lines? Are there any uh, just issues pertaining to the uh, school department and our committee right now that you feel really passionate and excited about? I would say I'm passionate just to give back to the group of kids and that are currently in the school system because I understand the challenges and issues that are in the school. Um, and I also see the pride that the Rockland students have um, within their community, and I would like to be a part of that. Anybody else? No. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
is Melissa. Mara Small. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Melissa Morrow Small. I uh, have been a resident of Rockland for the past seven years. I have three children, ages six, three, and one. My oldest is in kindergarten this year at Jefferson School. Um, by training, I'm a pediatrician. I'm a pediatric hospitalist since the attire I came from work. Um, so I know a lot about children. Uh, I have a strong interest in STEM education. Uh, I would love to see uh, our system really do more for our children. I was surprised when I went to my daughter's kindergarten class and I was told by the teacher that the children in Rockland come in at a, at a big disadvantage, that many of them don't go to preschool and there's this big gap from where they are um, starting to where they, so even though they're seeing big gaps and big advances in kindergarten, they're starting at this lower starting point and I feel like we could do so much better and we could do so much more for our children. Um, I have a history, obviously, personally, of doing STEM education. I have a strong interest in it. Uh, I'm committed. I'm dedicated. Um, I'm invested. You know, my kids are here. My kids are in the school system. I want them to succeed. We want everybody's kids to succeed. <laughs> Co correct, right? But like, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm motivated. Haven't been a graduate of Rockland <coughs> school system. <laughs> Like so many of us up here, we're all vested in the community as well. Um, any questions from the board? As a hospitalist judge, is on a routine schedule? No. So I work days, nights, weekends, holidays. Um, I have a, a varying schedule. Be no issue then making meetings or any of that, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I do. I actually have a, a, a lot of my work is administrative now. I'm about 25% clinical and 75 administrative. Uh, my time is split between Floating Hospital for Children at Boston and Brockton Hospital here locally. Um, and so I, my understanding is that most of the meetings are in the evenings, and so I do have the ability to make myself available. I book my schedule about three months out, but I have flexibility. Okay, anybody else? Any you answered my question, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or as far as entertaining either of the candidates for so does the school committee have any thoughts or yeah, yeah. Before we vote, um, I just wanted to thank both candidates. Uh, we find ourselves in a uh, really fortunate position to have um, two candidates that we would be very, very pleased to have work with us in Rockland Public Schools. The only unfortunate part of this is that we can only choose one of them. Um, yeah, I have no have the opportunity to know both of these ladies um, previously, and uh, they both have my respect, and I'm really happy that uh, people of this ilk are volunteering their time for Rockland Public Schools. So. Um, I, I know that whichever candidate that we end up with will be in very good hands, and I hope that whichever candidate um, does not end up with the seat tonight continues to be involved in our schools and continues to volunteer, um, because as we know, all know that there are a lot of opportunities to do that going forward right now. So um, with that, I think that as a committee, we are prepared, all prepared to vote. Mr. Chairman, do you think it might be uh, uh, wise for the four or five people that might be watching this on television to explain the process that has happened and where, why we're here tonight, or is that, you're, you're satisfied that everyone is pretty much aware of how it's happened? Certainly. Um, we're here tonight because we have a regularly scheduled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and where tonight could you ask us? Uh, I guess that comes. Actually, what, it, what has happened, we had a, um, a school committee member who uh, resigned from the school committee um, just after the election. So we didn't have time in order to um, get a candidate up for election. So this um, position will be filled by either these two tonight to um, fill the remaining term of that individual's um, position. And that individual was um, um, Mr. Norling, so, and he has resigned, so. I believe, when's his, um, is that up next year? It is up next year. So this it's only for, for... If I could, Mr. Chairman, this would be for the remainder of the year, and there would not be any remaining time on that term, so uh, there will be a three-year seat 
uh, Mr. Norris would have been up for re-election in April, so there will be a three-year seat open on the school committee at that point. So either of the successful candidates would have to run for re-election next April. So, um, and again, to echo uh, Mr. Biggin's sentiments, it's, it's actually nice to see some new people, new faces, get involved in the community, because that's what we need. Um, I know um, it's difficult when you're young sometimes, because you get busy, and when you have a young family, it can also be difficult. I know my kids are grown, so it affords me the opportunity to, you know, stay a little bit involved and also working for myself, it gives me a little bit of flexibility for schedule, and that's a big thing too with committees. Um, typically, you know, a lot of people don't realize it, but uh, the people we have in committees actually put in a lot of time, a lot of volunteering time, a lot of time, whether it's the school committee, a historical, or conservation, or a any of those committees, and some of the elected committees as well. I mean, there's a lot of time that goes into keeping the town running. Um, so we want to thank those people for coming out and doing that. Um, Mr. Mr. Biggin should call a roll call of his committee. Should we come up there? Or there? Yeah, there, 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 do you want to come up in front of the camera? Uh, here, put it on camera? Or do you want to have Dave pan over? You can, you can, can pan right there. there. there you go. Uh, Mr. Biggin, you should call the roll call of your committee. Okay, at this time we'll call a roll call vote to um, weigh in on our vote for our appointment for our next school committee member, and we'll begin the process with Mr. Garofalo. My vote is for uh, Dr. Morris Morrow Small. Mr. Mills? Hey, Dr. Morrow Small. Mr. Phelps? Dr. Small. My vote will be for Dr. Morrow Small as well. Five members tonight? Four. Four, Four excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to get the will be five. That's right, four. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so looking four. back there, I'm saying I can't see the fifth member. I'm trying to pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chim. Yeah. Um, I, uh, first of all, as I just mentioned, um, oh, the school committee is like home to me. I was excited when I heard Emily. Um, oh, Miss Harrison was um, interested um, and excited about, um, oh, you know, like applying and, um, Probably being appointed, and I, and when I heard, um, I like of Dr. Small's interest also, I was, I was, I was equally excited. Um, I am, all, all partial to, um, um, you know, all being excited about young people of, who have especially gone through these schools, um, uh, having them involved, um, but I also. Um, uh, like from my point of view, I think um, it's important to uh, to understand uh, the will of the uh, uh, school committee as well, um, and the fact that uh, they were also uh, like unanimous um, um, in their choice, and uh, the fact that uh, like really like we'll all have to work together, uh, but it's really like the school committee and the superintendent on um, a regular basis who will have to uh, like work on um, a daily basis with. Um, whoever we are select. So I, I actually, admittedly, I came here tonight being very excited about uh, Ms. Harrison, uh, but for the sake of um, everything I just mentioned in um, and Emily, I really want and I'm excited about you uh, continuing to be involved, but uh, I'll make the motion um, it's a roll call vote. It's a roll call vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. All right, so you can record me. I'm sorry. Dr. Uh, Small. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. <laughs> so it's a roll, a roll call vote. So, so I'll, I'll echo uh, Mike's sentiments uh, about Ms. Harrison. Uh, I was impressed with your letter, impressed with your background, and I'm looking forward to a bright future from you in Rockland. Uh, I hope that you uh, do decide to get involved. Uh, and maybe run for the position in April, but tonight I will be voting for Dr. Small as well. Okay. Ms. Hall? Uh, Dr. Mara Small. Okay. Mr. Ryan? I also am going to go with Dr. Small. I've been in medicine for 50 years, and I'm also, she's a veteran, uh, U.S. Air Force, and uh, that counts quite strongly in my book. Um, it's good to have women in the armed forces. I know quite a few years, and uh, 
there's quite a few of them in the town of Rockland, and they're stalwarts of the community. And uh, I would say, welcome aboard. And and for Miss Harrison, uh, please don't take this as a rejection of you because it really isn't. It, it's just a unfortunate part of it. You know, in every game there is, there's somebody who sort of wins and somebody who loses. And you know, at the end of the day, we still go home and and work toward the same goal at the end. So. Again, I would enjoy the rest of the board and encouraging you not to uh, uh, be unhappy that you didn't get appointed, but to uh, strive to work to do something within the school committee or the school uh, department. I'm sure there's plenty of places for people who want to uh, be part of the system, if you will. So um, you see the, the, the men and the women of the committee, and I'm sure that they'll uh, be glad to let you give your opinions and anything else you want to. So. Congratulations, to him. Well, I will make it unanimous for Dr. Small, but I would like to um, address um, Emily that when I read her letter that she had interned for Elizabeth Warren, which I think was very good, and we could use someone like you on our Democratic Town Committee. And um, Ms. Hall happens to be a member of that as well, so um, if you could reach out to her and uh, maybe attend our next meeting, we certainly can use some young people in town to get politically active. And I think with the um, new school project coming up, if you would, I know it's the next um, item on the agenda, but um, if you'd be willing to put some time in for that committee, we'd love to have you get involved with that at the elementary school. So. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I believe there is a position on that committee for an alum, uh, specifically. So that would be, uh, I believe there's alumni in WRPS, but we are looking for people who have who have graduated from there to help serve on the committee. So that would be, I, I, I echo that. I think that would be a great opportunity. So with that, the roll call vote, I voted for Dr. Small. So Dr. Small is unanimous. Thank you and welcome aboard. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mr. Mills. Okay. Uh, make a motion to close the school committee. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. That's a vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I knew it was coming. There you go. Item number six is the establishment of the elementary school building committee. And um, I just want to speak a little bit quickly about that. Is The establishment of the committee is to fulfill a deadline currently. We have a, um, a short list on our books tonight, and that's really to comply with MSBA so we can get something moving. That list will increase in time, but we need to get to the first hurdle and make sure we meet the um, MSBA um, guidelines. So with that, Mr. Chalker. Uh, and Mr. Cron is here as well, Superintendent Cron. Uh, they are looking at and have, uh, for the establishment of that committee, uh, that has been forwarded to you. There's been two or three drafts. Uh, I know there are a number of uh, local officials who, by virtue of their position within the community, uh, are considered uh, on this. For example, the superintendent and yourself, Mr. Chairman, as the chief executive officer, and myself, I did not know what the will of the board was. So we've established the need for the committee. I think that the school committee has work diligently as well as the superintendent at soliciting volunteers. Uh, and that does not mean necessarily that this is the final end all be all for the committee. Yeah, I, I don't believe Mr. Cron, the committee's not restricted to this size. No. So we could have additional people. With Absolutely. I we're expect to forward. Uh, there are a couple of appointments that I'm not quite sure we can make. Um, in discussion with members of the board, whether it's the finance committee, and I, I know the people that have been put forward by the school committee are qualified people, but uh, Mike, you were just chairman of the finance committee. I don't know if that should come from the finance committee. Yeah, I, I um, think standard is if they appoint a position, it has to go through, uh, through a vote of the finance committee, which I'm sure these two candidates would be no-brainers. Capital you know, planning, especially the same. Especially for volunteering. Same thing with capital planning. Mr. Mills? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chalker, yes. Uh, in the, any committee that's on there needs to be appointed by that particular by committee. committee. Yeah. So as I go through this, please stop me, but I'm going to try and do this in one vote and hold, um, unless somebody wants to put a hold on someone. But for the establishment of a committee, uh, in accordance with 963 CMR 
0.00 attached for your approval is membership of the Rockland Elementary School Building Committee for the Jefferson Elementary School located in the town of Rockland as part of the Rockland School District. The committee being formed uh, in accordance with provision of all applicable statutes, local charters, bylaws, and agreements in the town of Rockland and Rockland School Districts. Um, school Building Committee member who is C, uh, a procurement officer certified, and I am as well, so uh, if Colleen needs any backup, I'll be there. But uh, Colleen Felizzi, who is the assistant superintendent. Local chief executive officer, Mr. Kimball, who is the chairman of the board. Town administrator or manager, uh, Mr. Chalker. And if you're following along on your list, Mr. Cron, I am the town administrator. As much as I'd like to be the manager, <laughs> I just behave like one. Uh, school committee member, uh, Chairman Dan Biggins. School committee member, Thomas Mills. Uh, I assume they've been approved by the school committee. Superintendent of Schools, Alan Cron. Local official responsible for building maintenance, Mark Schramm, who is the director of facilities at the school now. Representative of the office authorized to construct the building, uh, Mr. Kimball, you get you have already been designated as our local representative. Uh, school principal, the schools have nominated Michelle, and I do not have, can you help me with that name? Shifley. Uh, Capital Planning Committee, a member, uh, which will be appointed at some point in the future. A member knowledgeable in educational mission and function of facility, uh, Superintendent Cron. Uh, a member of the local finance, two members of the local finance committee, and they will be making appointments at a later date. Uh, later this month. Member of the, um, and it's, it is possible, the question came up, can somebody fill two roles? But they want somebody in the community uh, with knowledge of architecture, engineering, and or construction experience. Mark Schramm, who's director of facilities, was also, I believe, the project manager for the, uh, manager for the Hanover High School and comes highly recommended. And I know a number of people that were involved with that project as well. And, uh, saying his praises. Previous building committee member, after a nationwide search, Darren Valenzola. Uh, alumni of WRPS, Christopher Bernecki. I'm going to say it wrong. Bernicka. Bernicka. Uh, parent, political action committee, Danielle Biggins as a non-voting member. Preschool parent, uh, PAC, Ashley Cutter, Rockland Preschool parent. Parent, Jessica Carpine Elementary School Parent and Parent Committee. Resident local realtor, Trish, Trish Pierce, uh, she is an at-large member and a local realtor. Uh, and parent of the Youth Commission, uh, Jean Blaney, director of the Rockland Youth Commission. So with the, I think, three exceptions, I'd like to ask the board's approval. Can, I, uh, can we add Ms. Harrison, if she wishes to be a member? Would you like to be a member? <coughs> We add her to that list tonight. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just to, just to clarify it, all those other, all those people that are on that, except for that, uh, the non-voting member, are all voting members. Got it. Okay. okay. I have a motion for Ms. Harrison. A second. Okay. All those in favor? That's a unanimous vote. We got you now. We're not going to let you Mr. get Mr. Mills. Mm -hmm. Was that a vote, or did you want to comment? No, again? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now we need to appoint the full committee. Okay, we need to entertain a motion. A second, I know. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's the unanimous vote. Beautiful. Congratulations, and now we get to get to work. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Okay, under new business, we have a 745 here and for players, alteration of premise. I think the clock's wrong. I think it's actually 745. 745. 745. Motion to open hearing. All those, do we have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, hearing is open. Mr. Chalker? I'm trying to catch up here. Uh, the meeting is open. Uh, there isn't. Proposal to alter the premise, and I believe Jackie is here. With you tonight, Jackie? Steve Gart. Steve Gart, uh, their attorney. So they will, uh, here it is, I'm sorry, it's right on your, 
uh, application contact. He is uh, Jackie's uh, attorney. She is looking to alter her premise. She has gone through all of the requirements here in town. She's met with the appropriate board. She's met with, I believe, zoning. Uh, met with the building inspector. She's done everything she needs to do and is now looking for the final approval from the Board of Selectmen um, as is required by the ABCC. Um, they are looking for Jackie or Steve, you want to tell us what you're trying to do? Can you take the microphone, please? Yeah, tell us who you are. Sure. <laughs> Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm attorney Steve Gard for the applicant. With me tonight is Jackie Variety, the owner of Players Sports Bar and Grill. Before you this evening is an application um, required by the ABCC to expand our premises to an outdoor, an existing fenced-in outdoor patio area, which consists of about 845 square feet. It will hold about 56 people, seating-wise, and it is attached to the building, what they call the deck bar, um, which opens up directly to this area. There are a one entrance and three exits. The exits are in the fenced in area, a crash bar alarm, so no one can leave the premises or get into that area with or without alcoholic uh, beverages. The sight lines from the bar itself are direct to this seating area, so the, the uh, staff of the restaurant as well as the, the bartenders will have clear view of those folks uh, dining in that particular area. The restaurant itself consists of 7,600 and uh, about 20 square feet, and the, it, it is, uh, the capacity is 276 occupancy with about 225 seating capacity. We are not looking to expand the seating capacity with this area. Because it's a seasonal area, we will be just utilizing existing occupancy and seating capacity in the area during the uh, months of you know, nice weather. The Zoning Board of Appeals has approved the application to modify the special permit by which this particular property exists, allowing the outside dining area as it, was, as it is presented in your packet tonight. Um, the, um, the applicant requests, oh, the one last thing that you might be concerned with is of course the closing time, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the applicant agreed that the deck area would be closed at 11 p.m. each evening. And any light would be downcast in, on the inside of the fencing area to safety purposes it wouldn't be shining anywhere into the neighbors or anything like that as well as there will be no outdoor um, music or entertainment for that matter so that having been said I would be happy to address any questions you might have in your packet you will see a, a, a floor plan sketched layout which um, the only thing I will mention is that the, the the floor plan that we're sending to the ABCC does eliminate a doorway which is duplicative of the, no, at the top of the plan, you'll see a, a doorway that we're not putting in because it's, it, how it went in, I'm not sure. This is this one right here, folks. That one will be eliminated so that all of the traffic flow will be from those big fold-out okay. doors in mm -hmm. front of the bar. There will be no other way in or out of the, uh, except for the emergency exits, in or out. Um, so we've modified the plan as it's going to be sent to the ABCC. I think this is exciting. Mm. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people my age, or, 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 or whatever age. I mean, especially <laughs> now, the uh, the in thing is uh, to have the uh, the open air, and a lot of times, you know, Rockland people have to go outside of Rockland to to yes. do that, and uh, to have that right here, uh, like that players, uh, which isn't uh, Jack Keep involved in everything mm. in Rockland, and uh, like everyone loves you and appreciate everything you do and all your. Um, employees and everything too so I think this is amazing so thank you for that and, and it, it does it fits a, uh, an economic need for the applicant uh, the bar itself doesn't do that well in the summer months mm -hmm. because people are out and seeking mm -hmm. outside beach, venues yeah. so this will allow her the opportunity to compete a little bit mm -hmm. better with the uh, places in Norwell like um, not your average Joe's and the fours that have outdoor seating so thank you for your support any other questions or comments from the board uh, no smoking right no, no smoking. Just want to put that out there. Yep, that so okay. people won't think that it's an outdoor area. You can go right. out and smoke. And leave Thank you. Yeah, That's you know. a good point. We do have a little patio area. In the, in the front, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you know, that's fine. I'm, you know, I'm not really against the smokers. If they sell them, you should be able to smoke them, I guess. But, but well, you know, not, with, not, not, not inside or right. even in the premises that way, I guess. <clears throat> when are you prepared to open it? Assuming um, it's approved. As soon as this gets approved, hopefully next weekend, if everything yeah. Great. gets sent right away to the ABCC. I'll make awesome. a motion to, to approve the license. Not, you can't. Well, we have to close the hearing. Close the hearing. Just make a motion to close the hearing. Any com well, before we close the hearing, anybody in the audience have any comments? OK. 
Okay. Now we'll, Even I'll entertain Andy a motion. <laughs> Close to the closed hearing. He well, we've already talked to Andy. We already went to conservation to make sure everything was okay with them. We had a, we had a resounding okay. <laughs> okay, we had a motion. <laughs> To close the hearing? Yep. Yeah. I second it. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. To approve. So now we have a motion to approve. <laughs> Do we have a second? So I might have just beaten you to the kick today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? <laughs> good luck with everything. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Really good luck. Good job up there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the new business, we have item number eight, lodge and license application. 92 Church Street, Mr. Chalker. Mr. Chairman with us tonight, Kevin Clary is here. He is uh, the new owner of an existing lodging uh, house and he is looking for the lodging license. Uh, I suppose you could say it's new, it's more of a transfer, but uh, it is new because it is new to him. So, Mr. I'd like to come up and say a few words? Or? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm humbled to speak before the Board of Selectmen. And I just want to thank the town hall. Um, you know, we've had, you know, in the short time we've, uh, we've been in business here and the few interactions that we've had have all been really pleasant. And, um, you know, that's, that's been good. And uh, I purchased the property on May 5th. It's 11 room uh, lodging house and um, it's um, primarily an investment for me, but uh, it's a beautiful house. You know, we came down here. I was introduced to the property by one of my colleagues, um, and I came down. And I, you know, I, I don't know a lot about Rockland, um, but I came down and did my diligence, drove around the area, was very impressed. It's it's a very you know nice downtown and seems to have very nice people just being here tonight at this meeting and experiencing the interactions, you know, between, you know, town government and the school committee and, uh, you know, new businesses seeking, you know, expansion permission. It all seems, you know, it seems like I made a good decision and, and I'm looking forward to, you know, being a productive member of the business community here and, and uh, whatever I can do, you know, to help and, you know, if my, my property ever needs attention, you know, I'm, I'm always available. I'm local. I live in Boston. And, uh, and yeah, that's really, I'm just humbled to be able to come here and speak before you tonight. And Do you plan oh, on making any changes or upgrades to the property? Just improvements. You know, I think the last owner, I mean, he took care of the property, but just like a lot of people just, you know, kind of slipped off his radar, I think, in the last few years. So it needs, you know, it needs some attention. But it's it's a really nice house. It's an old farmhouse and, uh, you know, just has a lot of, you know, it has great curb appeal and it looks really nice. And, you know, we, may, we plan on doing some improvements around the exterior, but leaving it pr pretty much unchanged. I mean, we're not looking to do any additions or any major changes to the to the appearance of it. And then in t inside too, doing some minor cosmetic updates like kitchen, carpeting, bathrooms, things like that. Just trying to provide the the, the customer, the tenant, with a you know a nice, clean, you know, uh, safe place to live. Okay. Any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Ms. Hall. Um, is it sprinkled? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Ryan. Um, one of the requirements we ask of all people that get permits is that all uh, fees, taxes, uh, fire department things all get paid so that the uh, license goes through. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you owe any of that business at all, and you know, I have an inside track on one of them that said that you know, there might be one bill left out there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just so you'll know ahead of time that that's one of our requirements is that everything is paid and then you can come pick up the license. Of course, that's fair, you know? yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's typically, typically, if we do any approvals, it's subject to making sure that all uh, paperwork has been completed and <laughs> obligations have been met. That's typically what we do. Um, Mr. Mullen, you had a question? I like how the rooms are going to be um, all rented out by the week or the month? or the Residents have the option to pay the, you know, weekly or, or monthly. monthly. Okay. At, at the moment, I believe only two pay weekly. Okay. That's all right. Anybody else? Proposal to approve. 
pending all uh, requirements are met. Second. All those in favor? Best luck, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Kevin. Kevin Cleary, is that what it is? Okay, item number nine. The we have fund transfers. In the old days. <laughs> He's too young, though, I think. <laughs> so I'm too old, one or the other. Mr. Mr. Chonka? We have, uh, it's that time of year as we try and balance the books from this account to that account, so we have about five or four, five, six transfers. Um, and there are some explanations here, but from the Department of Utilities, request to transfer $15,000 uh, from the appropriation line, electricity engineering 0119600-520001 uh, to the Department of Board of Selectmen Open Space Recreation Plan. This is for the program we were talking about earlier. We now have to fund our 50% contribution to that um, study we're doing with MAPC. And that would be account number 0112258-58. 1062. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Let's vote. Next is from the general utilities account uh, $6,500, uh, line item 0119670 to data processing for computer services. 0115553-530400. Uh, it's just we've done some custom work um, with our technology company and it's trying to do the walk through with trash things. And we just. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Tell me unanimous vote. Uh, from the utilities count, Mr. Chairman, $12,500. Line item 019600 to the Town Hall Utilities Maintenance Account 0119252-521500. Uh, and that is to complete the construction that has been taking place outside and security camera. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous vote. Uh, Mr. Chairman. In the uh, request to transfer $3,061 from um, Sundry's account, 0112251-542400, to the Council on Aging and their maintenance account, account number 0154152-524200, and that is the town's portion of personalizing the new bad bus, that, uh, excuse me, COA van that we're going to get. So, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, from the utilities account, uh, request for $2,000 from the streetlight account, 0119670-521100 to the town meeting and election personnel services, uh, uh, line item 011625. 51-51 one dash five one one zero one nine uh, and that is because of the additional uh, funds we will need for the special town meeting. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Again, Very unanimous much. vote. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Shaka, it's time for the town administrator's report uh, and correspondence. Know, and I missed during the appointments the two that we wanted to make so that we can stay up to stay up to date, but uh, Judy Hardigan was looking um, for appointment to the Housing Partnership Committee as well as John Lucas. We had reestablished the Housing Partnership Committee, um, and I have those. And uh, Motion they will approve. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. All those in favor? They're not getting away. In the vote. We still have some work to do, and I appreciate their volunteering. Did not take very much arm twisting. Uh, as you've all seen, the uh, new sign is out front. I have to tell you, um, I checked with the building department uh, today and everyone, everything's been going well. I want to thank uh, certainly Paul Carley um, for all of his work and helping to put all of that together. Um, John Melvin was our unofficial supervisor of the works. He was out there during a lot of it. Pat Foley, if you've noticed, we've placed some planters. We're not done out there. We've got some benches going. We've got some planters. Pat Foley 
has been doing yeoman work and making sure our downtown revitalization areas uh, and planters are all planted. And uh, we want to thank her. Jim Paul uh, helped out with the electricity on short notice. And um, just a lot of people doing a lot of different things. I want to thank them uh, as we move along. We are still working on, and I have not figured, I called into the company today on uh, some of the control aspects of it, but we are maintaining our passivity. Uh, just one sign, nothing rolling. Um, I want to remind anyone who is listening and or remind your neighbors that any fences that are constructed in the town uh, need to be on your own lot line. Your lot line does not, unless you have some sort of lot marker, does not go to the edge of the sidewalk. So we've had a number of people that have had to move their new fences at their own expense. The other thing is the town does not pay to replace fences that are damaged if they're built on town line. When the snow plows come by in the winter and they, they're shooting a, a lot of icy, heavy snow at your fence and it's vinyl and it breaks, it's not, and it's someplace it's not supposed to be. Just a reminder to the public, um, you know, to move back onto their own property and not to crowd the street or the sidewalk. Typically, the lot line is uh, another two or even three feet beyond where the sidewalk is. Um, just a reminder. Uh, a reminder that Saturday, June 10th, is the Rockland Day event. There's going to be all kinds of things going on from kindness rocks, painting, balloon twisting. There'll be local crafters, pony rides, live music. And this will be going from 1 to uh, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. Stadium. It's free, uh, but it's a number of Rockland Day events going on. We've got a number of sponsors. It's really become uh, quite a community event, and uh, I think it may uh, really serve. This is the initial one, but we're hoping that it will be an annual event. And uh, we want to thank uh, certainly a lot of the sponsors, and I believe Mountain one was the primary sponsor um, to donate to that. A reminder that uh, on June 16th, we'll be hosting, uh, and Gene Blaney's been great. Michelle Finn is coordinating this, uh, our first Rockland Farmers Market. And that will take place every Friday from June 16th through September 15th on the new Rockland Town Hall Plaza. Uh, and we're even looking to uh, working with Dave Taylor today uh, towards trying to level off the area uh, between the old gas station and town hall and do some additional landscaping. And eventually, if the market gets big enough, we could expand into that area as well. Um, but we need to level the land a little bit, and we're looking at getting some blocks over there. But the new farmer's market will be 3 to 7, beginning Friday, June 16th. So come by and um, try some of the local products and there'll also be some artists there and some local uh, local talents uh, trying to sell their wares so reminder the rockland dogs dash the 5k dog dash run walk uh, benefiting the um, social league champs we get to say that this year about our hockey team uh, will be taking place on june 17th Saturday at 9 a.m. and uh, they'll be starting out down at the ice rink down on Summer Street. Uh, I did have one other update. I know that uh, we have a number of people watching uh, and I have been in contact on numerous occasions with both Representative uh, DeCoast and Senator uh, Keenan regarding uh, the Reeds Pond Dam. There's been correspondence back and forth between this office and emails. Um, I know Representative the Coast was speaking with representatives from uh, Governor Baker's office today. Uh, there was an appropriation uh, maybe three years ago, um, almost a false hope. The appropriation was said, yes, go ahead and spend $100,000, but the $100,000 has never been included a in a bond issued by the state. So uh, both the representative and the senator are pushing to make sure that the executive offices at the state level include the $100,000 to fix the Reeds Pond Dam and the channel underneath and going back and forth. Uh, they are working towards a solution. Uh, we can talk about the boards for another hour if you'd like, but uh, 
Uh, obviously, when I, uh, Mr. Ryan, what did you say? Three inches of rain today. <coughs> we know that this. Well, we went over three inches as I was on my way here. I looked, checked my rain gauge, and and uh, I, I actually went down to uh, Summer Street and checked uh, both drains. The one that goes down by Del Pret's farm, that end of Summer Street. Uh, you know, one of the issues becomes that the old stream bed that ran back to. North of Summer Street has been uh, doing the trout, was has filled in with grass and debris, et cetera, et cetera, so it doesn't drain as quickly as it may should, as it, it probably should do there. However, uh, both areas were well below the, what I would call the flood stage, if you will, and the water is, is running pretty good. And I went down to Wyman Fields and checked some of the storm drains down there with some of the people that have been having issues that we've talked about in the past. and. The water was, seemed to be, even after two and a half inches of rain overnight, the water seemed to be well under control in those areas also. So, um, I can tell you, Mr. Ryan, Ms. Hall was down there, I think, the next morning walking some of the same areas with uh, uh, Dave Taylor and John Laughlin. From yeah. the, you know, and I just want to try and let the residents know that we're well aware of the situation. It's not going to slip off the radar. Uh, we can't remove the boards today. Right. Uh, we're probably looking at late July or August sometime, even September, uh, when we can really safely remove the boards and uh, get to a point. But we're also looking for the state to uh, do more than pass uh, semantic legislation to actually fund the right. solution that they promised us. So I did speak um, to both legislative members uh, also to uh, Tell them that you know we were going to at the meeting discuss this as a board, and that uh, we're going to uh, hopefully put the pressure on them to see if they can free up that hundred thousand dollars and get this deal done. Uh, the other thing is, <clears throat> I talked with John Laughlin. The um, area behind two thirty nine Moncrief is both scheduled to be uh, dug out. It's a it's an open channel drainage that really has not been properly maintained. Right. Um, and because of that, water has made a, se a second channel, which ultimately flooded the resident. Um, there, that's scheduled to be cleared this week. I think the rain is going to probably delay it. They can only do they can't do it once wet over. Right. But it is scheduled to be fixed this week. I uh, and I and I can say from my position as town administrator and uh, Mr. Ryan, Ms. Hall, and uh, certainly uh, this entire board, uh, this is as active. Uh, on board as I think I've seen in a long time. Uh, you've all taken on different projects and uh, I appreciate the uh, the support and the willingness to just roll up your sleeves and get in there as well. Uh, I know, Deirdre, you were down there early in the morning. Uh, Mr. Ryan and I have both peered over the fence and I know you've gone down oh, and looked yeah. at this. And It seems to be true of every issue in town that this board, somebody takes the lead, whether it's the zoning up to um, um, Union Point or whatever, you know. And as we proceed, uh, I, I anticipate that uh, you'll all be keeping me busy, but uh, I enjoy getting things done. So uh, let's roll up our sleeves and continue. I look at the grants we just received and all the projects we're doing. Um, uh, there's been lengthy talk about the direction the town's going, and I just continually feel good about all the things we're doing here in Rockland. So I want to thank the board. That's the end of my report, Mr. Chair. Okay, next up we have selectman's comments. Comments and opinions expressed by individual members do not necessarily reflect the views of all the Board of Selectmen and are the opinions and comments of only the individual member. That, Mr. Laughlin. Uh, first off, I guess the, uh, the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I participated in that this past weekend, uh, the weekend before. Uh, great turnout uh, for the members of the community and it was a really nice ceremony down at the, uh, at the cemetery and at the library and at the Veteran Memorial. Uh, down at the high school. Uh, so nice, uh, nice ceremony by uh, Anton Materna. Great job uh, pulling the whole thing together. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, Alan, you have pretty much everything covered in your, your final remarks with the Rockland Day, the Farmer's Market, uh, the Dog Dash, which would be June 17th. Uh, that's at the high school hockey team. And then on June 14th, there is a breakfast at the fourth floor artist studio. The theater, I don't know if you're going, but uh, we were both invited to. It's meet the selectmen, uh, the new members of the selectmen. Uh, that's at 7:45 on Wednesday morning. So come on by and uh, meet Deirdre and I. Okay, Miss Hall. 
Uh, I just want to reiterate, uh, hopefully people can come out to the Rockland Day and the Farmer's Market. I'm very excited about the Farmer's Market. Um, actually trying to, uh, my own, trying to grow my own vegetables unsuccessfully on my porch, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to purchase some better looking ones at the Farmer's Market. So I, I, I just urge everyone to come out and participate and, uh, and, and enjoy the day. Thanks. Mr. Ryan, you're a vegetable grower from way back, right? <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, the potatoes are doing extremely well this year, but that's about it. The, uh, the hot weather crops are uh, well rooted, and when the sun comes out, I'm sure they're going to take off. Uh, Rockland Day, come on out, folks. Be part of the town. It's always a good event to get the people out together and uh, meet your neighbors, see who the kids are hanging around with, and there's a lot of good stuff that goes on, and always a pleasant time. Had a couple of people talk to me about the burned out buildings that we have around town that haven't been taken down yet. And when is the town going to put some teeth into getting whoever owns the places to get them cleaned up and torn down? The liability of somebody getting hurt or some kids going in there just to play spooky house or anything else uh, becomes a danger all across. <coughs> cars at the airbase. People ask me what all the cars parked at the airbase for in Rockland Territory, and I'm not 100% sure they're all in Rockland territory, but uh, we're going to find out what, why they're there and, and if it's part of Rockland, uh, what permits uh, we should be getting, yada, yada, yada. But we're on top of that, too. I don't really have an answer to those people that have been asked me yet. Um, all the committees that the, the Board of Selectmen uh, appoints, uh, we're trying to get everybody working together to make sure that all minutes and uh, recordings of every meeting are registered with the town clerk uh, immediately after they're approved so that they can go into the public record and anybody who wishes to find them have a place where they can go to find them. Uh, special town meeting. Uh, we need 150 people who care about the revitalization of Rockland downtown to uh, help us take by eminent domain a place behind on Webster Street that will allow us to make a parking lot that will better serve the uh, public that come to Rockland to uh, go to the restaurants, go to the stores, or have anything to do with downtown that'll give us, I don't know how many more spaces, but it appears that we can add quite a few very close to Union Street where people can, it's just a short walk to where you want to go. We're looking for that. Uh, the Memorial, Memorial Day Parade, uh, Bill Horsch, nice guy, didn't realize he was uh, uh, so old and so uh, decorated, if you will, and uh, he's a great guy, and uh, the Horse family's been stalwart to the Rockland community for a long time. Uh, let's see what else I had on my list here. I think that might do it. And uh, the Reed's Dam business, uh, we're going to get to it, and we're going to make sure it gets taken care of so that by next winter uh, we no longer have this issue. It's been going on long enough. With that, I'm done. Mr. Mullen? Uh, yes, um, a few things. It's actually ironic. Uh, one meeting, I don't have anything, and then uh, tonight I probably won't be able to shut up. But um, that being said, hold on to your belts, folks. Um, first of all, I just want to um, emphasize what uh, um, oh, Mr. Ryan mentioned about uh, the upcoming uh, town meeting on Monday, June 19th at 7 o'clock in the high school auditorium. The only item on the agenda is um, 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 uh, I'm just asking and uh, we're seeking your approval uh, for the town uh, to proceed um, uh, with the process um, uh, to take the property of uh, 16 Webster Street uh, by eminent uh, domain. Um, one of the things, um, especially in uh, the recent uh, 40 hour process, um, uh, like everyone I heard from, every, a lot of people at uh, the public hearing, um, uh, you know, other comments and other question uh, were was, uh, this is great, uh, this is exciting, uh, but what about parking? And um, oh, you know, like in the whole time, uh, like I didn't have any idea. Like we didn't have any idea that this uh, uh, property was an option at that time. Uh, but we said, oh, you know, like we do things in incremental uh, steps with, um, you know, like with a focus also on uh, like a bigger uh, strategy and, and, you know, that will be the next focus. And uh, timing-wise, oh, this um, you know, potential opportunity 
popped up. Uh, I really do believe it's one that will um, I'll fill uh, like a really, really big need. Um, it's a building that is, uh, it's a house that is in a uh, significant uh, disrepair, I believe, uh, beyond the point of return. And um, um, I do believe the possibilities um, uh, that it presents uh, for residents um, in town uh, to support uh, the local uh, small businesses uh, who have been um, in, Wa in Rockland and with Rockland forever. I mean, we heard about that uh, like at town meeting. Or we heard about at, that at the hearings. And uh, this is, uh, like in my view, and um, in the view of a whole bunch of people I talked to, really uh, like the next uh, step like in moving forward and, and really continuing the momentum uh, that, uh, that we have in our downtown to uh, 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 to revitalize it. And um, as I heard uh, like from uh, like a meeting last night, really to reimagine it. And um, it's exciting. And, um, um, and that's what uh, we're trying to do. We're in 2017 now, um, and we're trying to make sure uh, that Rockland is, um, has a really, uh, really bright uh, spot in 2017 as well. So again, uh, the 19th of June, which is a Monday night at, at 7 o'clock, um, uh, the town meeting will hopefully only be, I don't want to set a time limit, but hopefully just around half an hour. Um, uh, it's only one article, so hopefully we'll be able to get in. I have a conversation, I can move forward. So that is that. Um, also, like, like Mr. Ryan I had mentioned, I, I also heard a lot, um, like and I uh, received the email uh, like about the, uh, the Volkswagen uh, uh, storage lot um, uh, like in Union Point as well. And um, I've been in touch with, uh, with the chairman uh, with Mr. Chaka, uh, with uh, like a bunch of people trying to get to the bottom of uh, like any uh, potential uh, requirements uh, that Weymouth might have made, and uh, like we're looking to get to at the bottom of that as well. Um, uh, we talked about Rockland Day, uh, but also uh, like I really don't want folks uh, to miss uh, the other premier event happening that evening. At 6 o'clock, uh, the charity softball game um, that has um, uh, like a bunch of uh, Rockland uh, groups, town departments, uh, civic groups, uh, businesses um, uh, like are participating. Um, I'm participating. Um, if anyone remembers me from way back in the day when I played Little League, I was afraid of the ball. And I promise I won't be afraid of the ball Saturday night. But uh, so that should be a lot of fun. And um, it all, uh, um, on a serious note, like it benefits uh, one Rockland, um, um, uh, benefits uh, the, uh, the Quirk uh, Scholarship Fund, and I believe uh, the Sullivan Scholarship Fund as well. So uh, that promises just to be a night or actually a whole day um, of what Rockland is really all about. Um, and then the um, a very last thing, and I could actually, I actually have three more things here, but uh, for the sake of getting home at a reasonable hour, I will um, shut up. But I just want to um, end by thanking uh, oh, Pat Foley. Um, and I'm just not even saying it because it's Mike's mom, but um, uh, like for the planters, uh, for your work on the uh, on the 40 hour uh, on the 40 hour committee on uh, like on the new reimagined Rockland a uh, committee pad uh, you're always involved and you always are just there and oh uh, so often especially in the past few months I've I've bounced in and out of uh, meetings I've said a quick hello and everything else but I just want to thank you you're just incredible and uh, I will that's all I have Mr. Chairman so that's it you sure you don't want to go the no, last no, couple no, <laughs> good we're good um, <clears throat> it was actually nice to read the Boston Globe this Sunday and have some good news about Rockland. It was in the Globe Metro South about Rockland Day. It was actually, you know, when I read that, it was nice to say, well, for change, we're on the other side of things, and I think that's good. Um, Rockland has changed a lot and has evidenced tonight the fact that we have, you know, two new people stepping up 
you know, for a single position on the school committee. I think that's great news. I think it's good that we're getting new faces and new people involved, as well as some of the old faces who are still here, like Mr. Khan in the audience. It's good to have old and new because then we can have a transition and we can move forward again with new ideas, so I think it's great. Um, I had somebody contact me about the rail trail, and I actually met them and walked the rail trail. And I was actually, um, it was nice to walk the rail trail, but sadly I'd like to, you know, I was embarrassed by some of the conditions that we found out there. I mean, some of the people simply aren't taking care of their property adjacent to the rail trail. And this was just after maybe less than two weeks' time where they had the rail trail cleanup. There's still some debris out there. There's still some items um, that, you know, shouldn't be there. Um, I initially walked the trail because we um, were walking the area that was paved. And it was nice to see people out there enjoying the day. But as well, I actually seen, uh, you know, one gentleman who was in a wheelchair, and it was nice to know that he could get down the trail because it was paved. It was nice to see people were out with their dogs on leashes, taking their dogs for walks. There were people in this kids and strolls, and you know, I hadn't really uh, walked the rail trail before that, so I spent probably, I don't know, a good few hours that day walking and driving and moving from one end to the other. And um, I think it's something we're going to need to look at funding at some point in the future that we have to have. Um, it's under parks and recs, but we're going to need to go through and make sure that we have some sort of mechanism to maintain it keep it clean. I mean, it's great that the volunteers and open space does all that, but at some point, it's the towns, and the town has to step up and take care of, you know, the, the, it's it's an asset for the town, so the town needs to take care of that. Man? Yeah. Um, one of the issues, and I've been out there with Donald, I can, and the people, is that the, the neighbors who live adjacent to the rail trail often pile all their tree debris and all that along the edge of the rail trail in order to not allow people to cut through their property to get to it. So, I mean, I looked all the way along it from one end, pretty much one end to the other, and that's one of the dominating uh, things I noticed right away was that people are, are reluctant to uh, have their area clear because they don't want people walking through the yard going, you know, and invading their privacy, yada, yada, yada. Well, one of the other observations I made is <coughs> some of the people actually drain their property down onto the rail trail. Right. I mean, there seems to be, you can see some piping, things like that, that over time people were, the trail wasn't utilized before. It was an abandoned railroad bed that people uh, got accustomed to dumping their debris, dumping their lawn and um, clippings and things like that, and their brush as well, you know, if they expanded the yard and cleaned it up. If the yards were wet or sloped, they would naturally pitch them or add some drainage into the trail. So we have some standing water on either side of the trail, but a lot of it could just be uh, attributed simply to the fact that it's coming from the other properties. So I think we need to look at that in the future, but more importantly, we need to set up something, whether it's expand the park department in the future or do something so we can have a mechanism in order to take care of it. Because again, we appreciate the work that the um, open space people do, but at some point, the town has to step up and say, you know. Back in Highway, um, we do have a phase two grant request in now. Um, but at some point, you know, and, and again, as we all look forward to the development, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be your financial base. And I know we're all looking at Union Point as well. Uh, should Union Point come on, uh, it should be. It's uh, a very good financial benefit to the community. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll have mechanisms to do that, whether it's improvements to the schools or other public properties. But, I mean, the town's in a good spot now, but we also have to, we can't not um, be cognizant of the fact that we have properties out there that, you know, we take for granted, and then we need not to take them for granted. We need to make sure that we maintain them so that we're not repeating the same steps of previous boards in the past where, you know, we we're faced with we need to replace the senior center, we need to do the roads, we need to do a school. I mean, if we can do this in moderation and we can set things up, it would be great because it's one of the things that people seem to use. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we see as a board, we only, a lot of times we only see the fact that when people come before us, it's because they have something that went wrong and we're kind of uh, the side that has to look into things and try to figure out a solution. And again, that was part of going out to the rail trail, but 
when I actually walked the rail trail, there was so many people out there utilizing it. And I'm like, wow, this is great. It's good that the town's using it. So we need to be good stewards for the town and figure out a way that we can improve it. You know, so not only improve it, but maintain it and keep it so that people can utilize it. So it's something to think about. Um, as far as the dog stash, I would be remiss if I didn't mention former selectman Mike Johnson. I know that was near and dear to his heart to have the dog stash, and I think he um, set that up for um, actually moving it to the 17th. Um, so, uh, I would just quick note on that one is uh, my wife, of course, we're right on the dog dash on Concord Street, so we're going to set up a water station and we're going to have maybe a few dozen water balloons to take care of Mike as he goes by. <laughs> so, Mike, have a good run. We'll be glad to see you. Hopefully, see a lot of people out there enjoying the day. It's uh, you know no nothing better than to get townspeople together on an outing where you, you know, like you meet each other. You know, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think the town's headed in the right direction. And it's evident by the fact that you have a lot of people getting involved and in you actually having new things and new events. Um, the farmers market. I mean, it's encouraging to, that we can finally have something like that out here at the town hall plaza. Um, and again, follow up, um, as Mr. Chakra mentioned, the board is very active. Um, whether it was members of the board going out physically seeing things and meeting people, or uh, emails that were copied on, you know, going through to talk to a state senator or a, a state rep, and, and as well as a lot of things that the board works on um, that isn't publicized. You know, we go to a lot of different meetings, a lot of different committee meetings, and we attend those and we try to give some input you know, so that we can start to shape things as they come up. Um, so we encourage people to get involved and we encourage people to comment and help us out with that. Because if we don't know about it, we can't fix it. But at the same time, um, if you know about it, roll up your sleeves and give us a hand fixing it. It would be nice you know, to get some help on that side. Um, and I like to, um, in closing, I'd like to congratulate um, our recent class of 2017 who graduated last Friday. So I'd like to congratulate all the uh, members of the senior class who graduated. Um, and with that, um, in the future, if we can eventually get our State of the Union address on, I know it's a, it's a work and not, it's a movement, but we need to look at that when we have some time. And um, again, we won't be meeting until after town meeting, so. <laughs> well, well, it, I think it's good because it could tell us where we were, what we've done, and where we're going. And like anything, I mean, you talked about the ADA thing earlier. We had a roadmap from 10 years ago. Does it need to be updated? Absolutely. But it gave us a heads up and it gave us an opportunity to get some things done because we were already prepared. And there's lots of other things out there that if we can lay the groundwork for that, whether it's this board or future boards, we have the ability to continue to progress and move Rockland forward. And as we've always said, we want Rockland to be the leader um, of the South Shore. And uh, I think it's starting to become evident that um, we're able to set the pace on a lot of things. You know, So I think that's good. So I'd like to thank the board for their support and thank the board and the townspeople for support. And hopefully this weekend will be good weather and we'll bring the town together. Yeah. That's all I have for tonight. Do we have a motion? I do. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And have a good night. <laughs>